nurse looked down at my notes. Take a good look, go on, I thought. It's all there. Nineteen-year-old Aoife Murray, mill bag from a council estate, too hick to use a condom with her Egypt boyfriend. You've come a long way today, she says. The name of the play is Cotton Fingers. It's a coming-of-age story about a 19-year-old Belfast girl who travels to Wales for a termination. Um, and it's a tribute to all those difficult journeys made by Northern Irish women to the mainland. And I just thought I'd do something about women's rights. And when I was looking up what was, what was new in the NHS at that time, it had, just that very week that I was sitting down to write, it, it became free for women from Northern Ireland to get their uh, care on the mainland by the NHS. I know when it started going wrong. Second week of January, day I cleaned the popcorn machine at work. The last jet I was opening, there was a queue down the block. The manager was rushing to open the doors and I was rushing to get all the unpopped kernels out of the machine tray in my hands, waiting for Brittany to bring the bin to me. Oh, these feckin' cramps, she says. What feckin' cramps? Is no cold red. See, Brittany and me have got our periods together since we started at the Omniplex. She was always cadging tampons off me. Cotton fingers, she called them. My character, Aoife, she is fantastic. Absolutely fell in love with her from the moment I read the script. Um, and she's she's um, has a lovely way of looking at the world you know, despite the hardships she's facing. So all I did really was read uh, quite a few interviews by women who'd had that experience, Northern Irish women, about what it was living uh, like with, with those laws um, and try to incorporate their voices into Aoife's character. I closed my eyes and pretended it was Maddie Ray. Eighth man for the Ulster rugby team, holding me instead of Killian. Maddie Ray's strength Working my jeans down my legs. Oh, Mary Ray's concrete thighs pushing my legs apart. Oh, the sex was always deadly when I pretended it was Mary Ray, <laughs> but it was Killian, so it didn't last ten minutes. It's like a slice of a young woman's life that we don't get to hear about enough, you know. Um, certainly, me personally, even as a performer, I have an appetite and I'm drawn to work like this that are that's a really wonderful three-dimensional complex female character um, and, and a character that needs a voice, that needs a conduit to, um, to her voice. Boy and girl and sex equals baby. That's science, that's simple. I think there's definitely an appetite for these stories. I'm excited as a performer to share this with people, to share Aoife's story and to be um, a conduit for her voice. When I phoned the advice service, the woman on the other end of the line said that if I wanted to terminate the pregnancy, I'd have to go to England. You have to go to England, she said. I'm quite new to theatre writing. It's only my third, my third play. I think of myself more as a fiction writer, but it's just a great opportunity to maybe take the play a bit further. International audiences may get to see it. But it's more like an abortion as an experience. You can't go around experiences. You have to go through. It might be zooming in on a microcosm of a Northern Irish girl, specific laws, but women's rights or human rights, I think a lot of people will be moved and connect with it and connect with the character and the script. There's always going to be someone there to judge you. No matter what you do. Young mother, single mother, council estate mother. We girl who had an abortion 